Hello friends, so your first track turned red in EAC, huh? You finally found an HTOA track CD, and now you have to rip it. Don't worry, I'm going to show you how to do that in a few minutes. We're going to get right to the point. Let's go. By following this guide, your output is going to look something like this. You're going to have a full disk ripped. You're going to have a HTOA track. You're going to have a log file for your full disk. You're going to have an HTOA track log, a Q sheet, and an M3U file. As far as the requirements go, we are using EAC or exact audio copy, which does mean you need a Windows device as there is only a Windows binary for this program. The good news is that you can use a virtual machine or you can use Wine, for example, if you're on Linux. You just need .NET 20 and .NET 40 as far as dependencies go, and maybe like a language pack and EAC should work right away. Virtual machines are very easy to set up. I'm not gonna explain how to do that here, but you just need to get a Windows machine to run EAC. You are then going to need a CD with an HTOA track on it. These are quite rare in general, but I'm assuming if you're here, you have one. And you have one probably because you detected it with a CD drive that can detect HTOA tracks, which is something you need, as well as a CD drive that can rip those HTOA tracks. As some can detect the track, but they can't rip it. You're not going to be able to tell if your drive is capable of ripping the HTOA track correctly until you follow along with this guide. So you can keep watching and hopefully your drive is one that can rip them. If you're not sure about your drive specifications and you don't know if it can rip HTOA or not, there is a website that purports to list which drives have HTOA support and which don't. I will link that in the description, but I do want to say I don't endorse any one drive on that list. I can't guarantee any of them will work correctly. For those of you who have never touched EAC in your life, and this is the first time, I'm going to very quickly go over downloading, installing, and setting it up. However, it will not be detailed in any way. It'll just verbatim tell you what you have to set a certain way. If you want more explanation, you can look at the description of my video. There will be a link to a different guide that I made for setting up EAC. If you've already set up EAC before, you've already done rips, feel free to skip ahead. You're not going to miss anything. So first things first, we're going to download EAC by going to EAC's website. That will be in the description. On their homepage, they have a big download EAC button. You're going to click on it and it's going to download the latest version. You want an older version. There is a sidebar that has a download older versions button. It'll bring you to a repository with older version. I am doing this on EAC 1.3 and there will also be screenshots on EAC 1.6. But if you're using a newer version, it is perfectly fine. If the video is still up, nothing major has changed. The interface probably looks exactly the same. So don't worry. To install EAC, you just double click on the EXE that you get. It's going to open up an installation wizard. It's going to ask you where to save it. You're then going to pick that location. It's going to ask you about plugins. Pick all of them except for GD3 metadata. And that's because GD3 metadata is a paid provider and you do not need it in any way. You're then going to click next through the other windows. And once you're done with that, click install and it's going to install EAC. Once you've installed EAC, it should pop up automatically, but if not, go ahead and open it up. You should see some sort of configuration wizard that's asking you questions. Close out of it right away. Otherwise, you're going to nerf your EAC because it's going to enable beginner mode and you don't want that. The settings for EAC are located in the top left corner. We have EAC options, drive options, compression options, metadata providers, and we're going to be messing with these options and setting them a certain way. There are some optional stuff that you can set how you want, but I'm not going to explain that. If you want an explanation, again, check the description for a detailed guide that I have on setting things up. To start, we're going to do EAC options. So you're going to want to open it up and then you're going to mess with the tabs in here. And once you're done, you're going to click OK to save your settings. On screen right now, you're going to see all of the different tabs and which settings you need to have set a certain way. Go ahead and pause the video now. Then we're going to move on to the drive options. In the drive options, there is one tab, the offset and speed, which you can't just automatically set yourself. You need to enable accurate rip. To enable accurate rip, the TLDR is that you have to put a CD in your drive. A little box is going to appear on EAC asking you to configure accurate rip. You're going to say yes, and it's going to enable accurate rip. If the first CD you try does not make the pop-up box appear, go ahead and try another one and then another one all the way until you get it to pop up. If it doesn't pop up, there is also a video in the description which explains how to get it enabled because there are some things that can stop it from appearing. 
Moving on, so pause the video if you need to. We're gonna go to compression options now. And within the compression options, there's only two tabs we have to mess with. They're on screen. However, the additional command line arguments, you can't just type that in, it's gonna be hard. So that will also be in the description below. Pause the video if you need to. We're now gonna move on to the metadata providers. I'm just gonna show you what mine looks like, but it really doesn't matter. You pick whatever you want. It can look however you want. It's not a big deal. Lastly, how to properly rip the CD. You would use action, detect gaps, then action, test and copy selected tracks, compressed. To create a proper cue sheet, you would click on action, create cue sheet, multiple WAV files with gaps, non-compliant. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are now gonna do the ripping portion of the H2A track. And first things first is we're gonna put our CD into our CD drive and we're gonna take a look at it in EAC. We want EAC to show us a red track on track one. We want our first track to turn red. If yours does not turn red, that is a problem. And it is a problem because when you have an HDOA track, EAC will always make the track turn red. If it doesn't turn red, your drive can't detect the HDOA track and you will not be able to follow along with the video. If you know for a fact your CD has an HDOA track because maybe you saw a rip on a private tracker that had it, Unfortunately, it means that your CD drive can't detect them. If you don't know for a fact your CD has an HDOA track, it's more than likely that it just doesn't because they're very rare. If you're just kind of following along with this with a random CD, there's a good chance it just doesn't have an HDOA. Now, we're going to move on. If you can't detect the HDOA track, your only option is to buy a new CD drive or try someone else's or try one in your old computer or something. And I can't guarantee that what you buy will work. So good luck. So if you detected an HDOA track, you now need to find out whether or not that HDOA track is just silence. And that's because a lot of HDOA tracks are just silence. In other words, there's no audio, there's no music, there's nothing there. You have to basically hit an even rarer table to get an HDOA track that actually has music on it. So to verify that the HDOA track is not just silence, we click on action detect gaps to detect our gaps. Then we click action test gaps on silence or we could press F3 to do that. In this UI, you can see the percentage of silence within each gap. You want to see a 0% in your track one. If it is higher than zero, but it's lower than 100, you still probably have music. But if it is zero, great, that's what we're looking for. Now I wanna say that my CD is kinda of messed up. I don't know what's going on. Some of the gaps are two minutes long, and this output is telling us that my CD has some music in between the gaps of other tracks. That's not supposed to happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw up right now a screenshot of what it looks like for someone else. Basically, you wanna have your first track have like 0% silence and the rest of them have 100% silence, which is normal. If it says 100% for you on track one, that is a problem. You do not want it to say 100% silence. If it says 100% silence, it's either that the H2A track is actually just silence, which means you kind of lose the lottery there, or it means that your CD drive can detect HTOA, but it's incorrectly telling you that there's silence there. You would have to be sure that the RIP itself has an HTOA track that has music in it in order to find out whether or not your drive is messing up. If you know for a fact the CD has an HTOA and there's music on it, but yours is saying 100% silence, then your drive has a problem, it can't detect it. You can follow along anyways, and hopefully you'll be able to rip non-silence, but there's a good chance that you're just gonna rip silence. And there is no real solution for this. Again, just like before, if it doesn't work and you only rip silence when you're supposed to have music, your drive cannot rip H2A tracks. You're gonna have to find a new one. So let's just assume your track has 0% silence or something similar to that, and you wanna rip it because you wanna hear that music. To do this, we need to identify the range of sectors which contains the HDOA track. You can either rip a regular 100% log of the rest of the CD, you probably already did this, or you could just start and stop a rip, which I'm doing right now on screen. You just press action, test and copy selected tracks, then you start the rip, then you click cancel. It will output a log file and all you need is the TOC or table of contents, which we will now look at. So you wanna open your log file to do this and then scroll down a little bit Take a look at the start sector of your first track. The expected behavior here is that your start sector is zero. I'm gonna throw on screen some examples. This is what it normally looks like when you rip a CD. It should always be zero. 
If it is not zero, and it isn't zero here in my case, it's 3809, that means that you have an HDOA track, and the HDOA track is from zero to one below that number you see. So for example, mine is 3809, the HDOA track is therefore zero to 3808. And that's important because we're gonna be using copy range, which needs that as an input. Now, for those of you who ripped 100% logs and you're hoping that your HDOA track also gets 100%, how we're doing that is we're going to mimic testing copy by using the next thing that we're doing twice. So we're gonna copy range twice. And that's because we wanna output two different rips emulating test and copy so that we can look at the copy CRC of both tracks and know that we did things correctly. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on action, copy range, compressed. In this UI, it asks for our start block. We're going to put that to zero. And for the end block, we're going to put our starting sector for our first track minus one. So again, minus 3809. That is my start sector of track one. I'm going to put 3808 because that is minus one of the sector. That's what we want to do here. So minus zero to 3808, yours is going to be different. Once done, click OK, and we're going to have the rip go. And once the rip finishes, you're going to do exactly the same thing again. So you're going to click OK when the rip finishes. You're going to let it output the log file and stuff that it does. Then you're going to go straight back to action, copy selected range, compressed, re-input the zero, and then your number for your end sector, click OK, let it rip again. It's fine that it's overwriting the file that it's in the folder already, it's OK, and it's OK that it's appending your new log to your old log, that's also totally fine. Once that's done, we're gonna click OK to output our new log, and now we're gonna check things out to find out if it went well or not. So to check if things went well, first things first, just take a look at the ripping UI thing that EAC gives you. If it says sync and read errors like mine does, things didn't go well. But we're gonna confirm that now because even if it doesn't say sync and read errors, things could have went wrong. We're gonna open up our log file and we're gonna be looking for the words timing problems or suspicious positions. And we're gonna look at the copy CRC of our track. And then we're gonna look at the second track and we're gonna see its copy CRC and we want them to match. Now on screen, my log, I only ripped one copy because it took forever because it's damaged. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw up someone else's log where they actually did the correct thing. And you're gonna see that in their log, they ripped a range of zero to 9224 because their start sector is 9225 and that's minus one. And we're gonna see that they output a log that had no suspicious positions, no timing problems, and the copy CRC of their first rip the copy CRC of their second rip matches. That's what you want to have. This means you did things correctly and it ripped correctly. Congratulations, you are done, awesome. Or you might be like me and you might have a bunch of errors in your log. If that's the case, you only have two options. Option number one is for people who were not able to rip the HDOA track at all and you want to actually hear it, you want to have it, you're going to go into your ripping mode and you're going to change it from secure mode to burst mode. To do that, you want to go into drive options, extraction method, and then you're going to change it to burst mode. This will allow you to possibly rip the HDOA track, but it's not going to let you get a 100% log file if you care about that. The only other option though, if things don't go right, is to buy another drive or try another drive. And again, like I've said twice before in the video, I can't guarantee that the drive is going to work. It's possible that the CD itself has issues, and so buying a new drive will not help. You might have to buy a new CD. But the thing is, is it's unknown, and it's kind of a waste of money. So what I would kind of suggest is to just look up online to find out if you can just get the H2A track and just pirate it. I don't support piracy. Obviously, I would never do such a thing. But, you know, there's ways to get the H2A track. You don't have to spend a bunch of money to just hope that you get it. So the only other thing we really have to do is tag our HDOA track. And to do that, the normal naming convention is to put 00, 00 as the track number, and then the word HTOA as the title, maybe HTOA track or untitled track or unknown track. It's up to you what you use in terms of language there. And then you wanna put the artist as the artist of the release. It's possible the artist of that track is unknown and you could instead put unknown. The album is obviously the album name, the year is the year the release came out, and you can add any extra fields that you want, like composer or whatever, if you know them. And I mean, that's pretty much it. The video's over now.
And you might be going, wait, 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 what about the Q sheet? What about the M3U? Well, its purpose is to create a playlist with that album. So when you drag it into a music player, it pulls all those files in and it creates a playlist of the album. The HDOA track is not included in this because EAC can't do it. So if you want the HDOA track to be pulled into a playlist with the album, you need to manually edit it into your M3U file. You can do this. It's overkill, but you can do this. There is a written guide in the description which explains how to do this if you really want to. I would personally suggest to just delete the M3U file because I think it's useless, but to each their own. For the Q-Sheet, its purpose is to burn the files back to CD. And the one that we created actually also contains the gaps, which means that your copy of the burnt CD will be a one-to-one -one match to your real CD. Except that your HDOA file will not come with it. If you want the HDOA file inside of the Q-Sheet, unfortunately, you need to manually edit it in. And this can take some time. It's not that difficult, but I find it hard to visualize on YouTube. So what I did is I have a written guide and you can also check that out in the description if you need to edit your cue sheet. But if you're never gonna burn your files back to CD, the standard convention for sharing HDOA tracks is to just leave the HDOA track the way it is. Don't bother about the cue sheet. It doesn't really matter. In the end, it's up to you. But if you wanna edit it in or create a new one in order to put the HDOA track in a certain place, you will need to look in the description. A guide will be there. So thank you for watching. I hope this helped you. I hope you have a great rest of your day. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will answer every one. I don't know everything about EAC. I don't know everything about HTOA track, but I will try my best to help you.